Hi, this is Tim. Let's talk about how to configure your RS-232 DF1 serial driver in RS Links. Note that this is an excerpt from a live stream, so it is not perfect. First, let's talk about connecting our 1747 or our serial cable. And we're going to do that with this Micrologix. And it actually would be very similar. Now, a lot of people will say, well, that's an older cable. Well, yeah, it kind of is. But there's a lot of times that we need to connect over something like serial. So this is a Micro 850 PLC. It's a modern PLC. And you'll notice it's got a serial cable. Now it has the round connector. And that round one is going to be our 1747, I'm sorry, a 1761 CBL PMO2. That's going to be the round one. You're going to find it on a lot of your MicroLogix PLCs. And you'll also find it on many of your modern PLCs. But okay, let's go with the 1747CP3. And I'm going to plug it into the 1400. And this is a USB version of it. So I'm just going to plug it into my laptop. And okay, we have a COM, ca COM port cable here. Now, one thing, if you actually go in, and let's talk about communication software. Because actually none of these three are what you communicate with a PLC with. There's actually two communication softwares. And so we have Factory Talk Links. So just start typing Factory Talk and you'll get it come up here. Factory Talk Links Network Browser. So this is a newer software that Rockwell has come out with. And I, I like a lot of things about it. Um, I'm getting used to a few things about it. But this will allow you to really connect to most modern PLCs with almost no effort. So while it's opening up, I'm going to open up the second one, and that's RS Lynx Classic. This is what a lot of people are more familiar with. So RS Lynx Classic. And the difference really is, while they've made this super simple, they haven't included the older drivers. So if I go to the configure drivers on this one, available driver types, you only see Ethernet. So that's kind of what this is made for, is it's made for Ethernet, and it also has USB right there. Whereas if our, in RS Lynx, if we go to communications and configure drivers, which is its a, you know, equivalent, and we have a gazillion, well, not a gazillion, yeah, I get a minute. There's only like 12 there, but there's a bunch of them here. And honestly, there are a few here that I have never used, but, um, but I, I assume they existed at one time. So this, uh, this has a lot of old school ways of connecting. But all right, we're going to be using RS-232 DF1 serial. So that's this one right here. It's not going to work in factory talk. And we are going to add a new. And, you know, I usually say that you want to name something, but this may be the one time that leaving the name at the default can be super helpful because when you get a file from somebody, it's going to have the link in it. And we'll go further into that later. But so it'll kind of tell you, okay, well, I needed a serial cable. And you can almost figure out which cable you need if you have an offline copy sometimes. But all right, so here's what we come up with. And it's going to default to COM1. And back when computers had laptops, COM1 was that 9-pin one. Well, if you're using a USB one, I will say 99.999% of the time, it's not going to be COM1, which is our first obstacle we have to get over. And to do that, we're going to go to our device manager. And this is actually a Windows um, control panel item. So this isn't a Rockwell item. But if we open it up, then we're going to go down through here and we're going to find COM and LPT ports. Now, if you don't have this here, then you do not have your COM port configured correctly. And I'm not going to go through that in this video because that really does vary by which cable you purchase. But I do have videos on our cables and you can find it. But once we get there, we see that this is COM3. So that is what the 1747 CP3 cable is going to be communicating over. So I'm going to select that. And then we supposedly have all this craziness to select. And we have this bald right and all these things that, yeah, one time everybody knew about, but now we don't know. But we have this magical auto configure button. And so what I'm going to do is click it, and bam, auto configuration successful. That easy. It went through and it figured out, okay, this is a micro PLC. And it also, while it ended up being the default, it will go through and figure out each, or it'll try each combination of everything here. 
until it works. So just to show what it would look like, I'm going to unplug the cable out of the MicroLogix PLC. And then we're going to go back in and hit the auto configure again. And you can see it zips through a lot of them really fast, but then it's going to slow down here because it's like, okay, let me try some of these older communications combinations. And it's never going to get anywhere, but let's go ahead and let this time out. All right, it says failed to find bottom parity, check all cables and switch settings. And if you get this, I will say that, well, you, you have a 50-50 actually. Either you selected the wrong COM port, go back to the device manager and make sure if, that you got the right one. And one, if you're not sure, let's say you had multiple COM ports, unplug the cable, the, the US. Now this only works for USB. Unplug the USB cable and see which one disappears and then plug it back in and that COM port will come back. Other than that, you have the wrong cable, and usually it means you have a 2711 NC13 cable, uh, which looks just like this, but is for panel view. So we're going to plug that back in, and then we will hit our auto configure button again, and it's successful, and then we're going to close this. And then instead of going right on to our PLC software, we can go to communications and RS who, and here we can see which PLCs are actually out there. Now, for the most part, I'll say, and here's one thing that kind of irritates me, is by default, the only thing that's there is this RS Lynx gateway. If you notice, we configured drivers. I only added this one right here. That gateway's not there. Gateway's almost going to do you no good when you're trying to communicate with PLCs. So if you see it, just don't even click on it. So we're going to click on this ABDF1, and there you go. Now we have a MicroLogix 1400. And pay attention to this. Well, let's wait on that. So this is the processor name. So we know we have a MicroLogix 1400 and its processor name is First Pro. And now we need to know what software to connect to. And we already have three open here. We have Logix Designer, we have Connected Components, and we have RS Logix 500. Well, RS Logix 500, that's the software we're going to use. But just to show what would happen if we had the wrong one, we're going to go here. And in Studio 5000, I always say go to Communications and then Who Active. Now, if you notice, well, as soon as we get this up, oh, wait, I got I to gotta cancel this because I didn't talk about one thing. Is since we have two softwares here, this is the old RS Lynx and this is the new Factory Talk Lynx. Our newer software gives you the option of which one to use. And I'll say if you're using Ethernet or USB, absolutely use the factory talk links. But right now we're going to go over serial because let's say we thought this was the right software. So we're going to select communication software and I'm going to select RS Links Classic. All right, now I'm going to go to communications. And notice we do have go online, upload, and we could have download here. I always like to go to the Who Active. And the reason for that is, is that I can make sure that I have the right PLC. But all right, we click Serial, and there is our MicroLogix. And it says, failed to go online with controller communications timed out, which is going to sound like we have an issue with our communications. And just for insanity, we would probably do it a couple more times. So we would click here, and then maybe we click back here, and we're going to get it again. And I kind of wish they would massage this to say, hey, you've got an old PLC and new software, or hey, this isn't something we talked to. I wish it would do something a little different here. But a lot of people will be like, hey, I keep getting this error. Well, this error means that you have the wrong software. So we're going to close this out. And then we're going to go over here to RS Logix 500. And again, while it's changed a little bit, we still have communications. And then we have, in this case, it's system communications. And this is going to give you all your options again. And then we're going to have our MicroLogix 1400. Only this notice, this time we didn't get a communications timeout. We have the go online button. So I'm just going to hit the go online. And then you're going to end up with this prompt right here. And I'm going to show you later on. I really... I really appreciate this prop more than I do in the um, newer softwares. It's first we can cancel, we can create a new file, we can upload use file, or we can browse. And so what this means is the file that we have open, and of course I started with no file open, doesn't match what it sees here in the processor. 
And so, well, we can cancel. And yeah, you know, here's one of those times if you're really not sure what going online means, cancel and hit the um, help button. But then we can create a new file. And but the one here that also we have is browse. And so if we think we have an offline copy of the file, then we could navigate here, find it, and go online. Now, I don't have an offline copy of this file. So we want to hit this upload use file, but it's grayed out. And that's because we need to create a file to do it. So I'm going to create a file. And you see it says uploading processor image. And there you go. Now we are online with it. And that little split second, it did upload. Click here for our free Allen Bradley PLC lessons. Till next time.